Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be looking at more Text Talks Biotech, The Amara Civil War Part 2. We are on Part 5, Endgame. No jokes, I have no idea what's about to happen, but I have an idea it involves Amaris being unalive, which is going to be amazing. Is what I would say if I didn't know whatever comes after this is going to suck. So something bad is going to happen also, and it's probably going to be way less amazing. I don't know, and I'm basically getting killed with the tension here because, dear God, I know something bad is going to happen. And I'm like, yeah, they're going to win. And then there's that bit in the back of my mind still going. No, they're not. <sighs> basically, I have mixed feelings about finishing this video, and I realize I am becoming emotionally invested in Battletech because of Tex's depiction of this. Also, because I absolutely love the Battletech HBS or Hairbrain Schemes version of the game. Man, it, it's just amazing. So, yeah, we're just going to run in, see what kind of fuckery we're into today, and... Uh, we make a joke about Comstar and paying bills right here, but it's not for Comstar yet. So, yeah, that's not going to happen. Otherwise, you guys know the deal. There's a link to Texas video down below. It's the Black Pants Legion. They do some really awesome shit. Hit them up. Are you done? Don't forget to leave that, 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 that. I cannot speak today. Leave a like. That's the word. <laughs> I've only been on YouTube for like, what, five years? <laughs> Seriously, dude. I can't believe I forget this every time. And when you're done, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get started. Part 5. Amaris had fled to his imperial palace deep in the secluded Canadian wilderness, guarded by oh, yeah, because they had a nice garrison. Age. The final operation was Kerensky, his right-hand man, General Aaron de Chevalier, oh. and members of the 26th and 3rd. Chevalier, Chevalier. Why does Chevalier sound very familiar? Not just because it's a French word, but it, it's like the name Chevalier sounds like I should know it in Battletech already. Why don't I remember? This is going to bug me. Probably until maybe another five minutes where he's like, oh yeah, and this is why you should remember him. And I'll be like, oh yeah, which usually is what happens. I know people have told me about this map. Battle like, I divisions. It the looks last so seven. major battle of Amaris's civil war ended with Kerensky kicking in the front door of Amaris's palace with his Orion battle mech and uh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I thought there'd be a lot of more build up to Amaris dying, but holy shit, does Kerensky actually do it himself? Literally massive satisfaction right now. Commanding Amaris's an surrender. And Amaris did. But and with that, the war came to an end. Oh. Once Amaris had ordered his men to stand down. He surrendered? There were only a few thousand left. He did? Earth was a near ruin. Much of its population homeless or starving. Kerensky had tried to spare civilian populations the worst of it, but Okay, one. Yeah, the situation's bad. Two. He surrendered? I was expecting he would either get killed because he did something stupid or he would legitimately just do it himself because fuck you. I was not expecting him to surrender. I was really not expecting him to actually order his guys to stand down. I mean, self-preservation's a thing, but usually this is literally everything his entire family has spent multiple generations on crashing and burning to the point where he can't even hide from anymore and he actually just took surrender. Okay, um, yeah, this, I, I, I mean, people do it, it just, you think the sheer depression at this point would, it's not over yet, he's going to do something else fucked up, isn't he? But Amaris had not, all in some way, bore the marks of the conflict. Mm. After her capture initially, Kerensky was keen to treat Amaris and his family with respect due as they were still royalty and laws applied regarding their treatment. Kerensky was, if anything, up to this point observant of the laws He's giving and over regulations the golden gun. of his oaths. Kerensky made certain Amaris had everything a deposed noble should. His family was kept in surviving luxury accommodation while forces gathered to debate what should happen. That oh. oh no, 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 no. Don't let this be the problem. Don't let this be what I think it is. 
after all the shit they went through, after all the heartache, after everyone hates this guy and they can finally do something about it because he's finally deposed, don't let the reason things go to shit being because Kerensky's honor means he's actually treating Amaris fairly by the standards of nobles as opposed to everyone else who wants to literally murder him. Because putting his family into luxury, even if it's standard to earth, which is shit right now, the fact that he's alive and his family is in really nice swanky digs, which could be, you know, just a house with plumbing at this point. But by comparison, that sounds like it's probably damn luxurious. That is going to not look good on Kerensky because he's being nicer to the guy everyone hates than the people he tried to spare, but they're just going to see that he didn't. Oh, no, 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 no. Please let me be wrong. I don't want it to be that his actual folly is that he followed his honor and was kind to the prisoners. Don't make that the hill that he dies on. Oh, no. It was until people discovered how this had all started. It is of note that the SLTF had no idea what happened to the Camerons beyond rumor. They had assumed Cameron was kept as a captive and that would be used Wait, as people actually believe that still? I mean, I get originally saying, yes, I have the Cameron as a captive. It makes sense because it gives him that time of legitimacy before he really enforces himself. This is so past the enforcement phase. It's the, I've already enforced myself, followed by, I've already lost. And they still thought he was alive? If he was alive, he would have been trotted out as a bargaining piece well before he was captured. But after, he probably took a palace. <sighs> I'm judging them for believing that. I can see Kerensky being hopeful to believe it, but in the back of his head going, nah, he did. But yeah, no. Keeping someone alive as a bargaining piece only works if you bargain with them, which he never tried. I don't... I'm judging them a bit for that one. His leverage, if Amaris ever needed a quick way out. Mm. A bargaining ship perhaps kept in a gilded cage. Didn't happen, though. But that was not to be. Two weeks after Amaris's surrender, the Imperial throne room was unsealed for the first time since the coup. Is the body still there? Since the massacre of House Cameron and... Within, the SLDF found the rotting carcasses of the entire Cameron family. The tomb of House Cameron shocked the SLDF. It gutted them. Kerensky had to see it for himself. Kerensky stood in the throne room for 30 minutes. People keep telling me Kerensky did one action out of pure emotion. Where most of the time, up until now, Everything has been by the book. And a really damn good book. And he's already won. And he apparently believed they were still alive. Which, yeah. But even I'll admit, keeping the previous throne room sealed as a mausoleum, it's basically Amaris's trophy room. And the trophies are all of his enemies' dead bodies. That's... <sighs> I'd say it's fucked up, but it's a Mars. This isn't the most fucked up thing he did. It's just really grim. Because you don't do that unless you know exactly what you're doing. You literally don't even take over the throne room yourself. You just keep the dead bodies there. Let them fall and stay dead. Which also means he was executing the Cameron family, unless I'm mistaken, while they were looking at the dead head of the family. Or lack of head, specifically. Because that part was not there anymore. Oh, that's fucked up. And well, on the upside, I'm pretty sure my previous worry about it going bad because he's too nice is not going to be what happens. It's probably going to be that he kills him and says, fuck it. Because whatever happens next is bad. I, I have an idea what's happening. I'm just glad it's not that his nobility is what is the Achilles heel. Examined how this had all started. Drinking in the details of the massacre and the awful desecration and how the bodies were merely sealed in and forgotten about. Kerensky Mostly thought about troubles. things for 30 minutes, and 30 minutes only, before he flew out to Amaris's hotel. He had decided on what to finally do with Stefan Amaris. Kill him? There was no trial. There were no words. Oh. Kerensky dragged Maris, his family, his retainers and advisors out of their accommodations and put them against a wall. And on his order. 
He had them all shot. Yep. Terra was in ruins. Star League was gutted. The hegemony a series of cratered, scarred worlds with dis I thought this would be the emotion, but no, this still seems logical. He's too dangerous to keep alive, and once he realizes how long it's going on for and how many generations, it doesn't seem illogical to take care of everything. I'm not a fan of the entire Scorched Earth method, personally, because usually it makes more enemies over the long time. But this time around, showing just how long that resentment had festered, getting rid of anyone to carry it on might have been the best choice. It doesn't sound emotional, though, because he wasn't the one to pull the trigger. Which also makes me more worried, because I thought him flying into a rage and slaughtering Amaris in person would have been the emotional thing. I, I, I keep hearing it's going to happen. It's getting more and more concerning now, because what is he going to do that's emotional? Because this still seems pretty damn logical. Mean as hell, but justified. What? Oh, no. What's going to be something really bad? Displaced populations. The SLDF were now all veteran soldiers without much in terms of guidance, a cause, or even a home. Many of them had been wounded multiple times and found ways to continue on. Without somewhere to go back Their to. victory now seemed, if anything, hollow misery. And the fleet was a collection of scarred vessels held together by jury-rigged yeah. repairs, stolen parts, and ragged oh. determination. Okay, that actually is an image I want to highlight just because it has a few things in there that you almost never see in, well, any art. Normally when you see beat up battleships, you either see massive ruins and wrecks that are completely torn to hell, or you see them as they're blowing up and their guts are spewing everywhere in the fires of annihilation. And it's freaking amazing. I love it. This though is aftermath. You can see that this isn't an active combat situation because there's pieces of, I'm going with a, maybe a mech suit that's ferrying in a bit of armor right here. So it's not an active combat situation. It's in a dry dock, it seems. This is a more or less limping but alive battleship, which honestly is just really cool itself. I love the detail. We can see the pock marks, the scars, the missing sections of the ship itself where something just tore open the superstructure. The capsule up here, it looks like a dome probably for hydroponics, which honestly is pretty cool. You can even tell that is just shattered and it looks like it blew out. Ooh, actually, yeah, they did put a little of the shear on the metal right here. You can see just based on that, it's blown out. So it was a depressurization when it was probably blown up. Really cool detail that. But I just, it's so cool to see the aftermath being taken care of in art. Most of the time, it's the battle. It's the crazy explosions. And I love that. But this is the downtime afterwards. And I think Tex definitely has, or whoever decided to pick this image, chose the right moment to show the depression that follows the end that moment of coming down from the high of victory learning the horrible secret that everything is kind of fucked and that you're basically limping on with people who have nowhere to go back to nothing left to fight nothing to throw themselves against and only memories of horrible things to face them there's probably going to be a lot of people who don't face it coming up and we're probably about to hear a lot of people took some really unpleasant options for themselves star league was now a distant idea a memory that had sustained them up to this point through hell could still happen if Mars time and again and now no. Nothing to show Prince for it. would have to take over and he wouldn't do that. The SLDF was down to at best a quarter of its pre-Civil War manpower. Its fighting men and women shells of the people they had once been. Yep. Used, abused, and wounded by the horrors There's only two war. options to get out of that. Many of them Time factually now had no homes. Or, or even if they war. could return, they were so scarred and Prince twisted by the conflict they'd never fit well, in. Now they don't have time. The war had made them ghosts. In the very end, Kerensky had 113 divisions left, many of them severely under strain, oh. missing critical components. Most of them were patchwork divisions made of survivors, volunteers, mercenaries, and replacements. The once proud SLDF was a mob of soldiers reduced to understrength units barely maintaining cohesion as a fighting force. And soon enough, Things would get far worse. What? The great houses seeing opportunity 
began to act. They would... Merrick won't stop juicing. Really? Because he has a huge neck? Oh my god, really. Lords to annex the hegemony. Yeah. I mean, I want to hate them for this move, but with the SLDF and Kerensky aware that there is no House Cameron, as far as I know, anymore, or as far as anyone knows, technically they might be alive, but no one's entirely sure, because for, as far as I know, that's never been clarified in decades. It's going to collapse on itself, and they have literally nothing there. Annexing the hegemony is probably the right choice, because there's no bureaucratic state, because Samaras killed that. There's no military state, because Kerensky just killed that intentionally, and it was the right choice. There's no resistance state, because... Amaris made sure to kill that, and there's no, well, there's really no one who can pick up the slack to take over, so when you have a decimated people, they're either going to starve on their own unless Kerensky saves them, and he's, he's a general. He's really damn good. He would try, but that's not his forte. It's not where he's the best suited. I don't like saying this is probably the right move for the people living there, but it kind of probably is. It's just also a nail in the coffin to say that, no, Star League's dead because there's no hegemony anymore. It's probably about to get worse. Occupy the remaining hegemony worlds for their own good. Really is And soon assembled to decide a new First Lord. Oh, I'm sure this goes well. Okay, so we've got up to No Good Deed, part six of the video, and I have an idea. I know exactly what's going to happen they're not going to agree. It's like there's been multiple secession wars and the answer has always been <laughs> no. But this is the first secession war. Or sorry, not secession. Succession. I cannot speak today, apparently. Yep. This is probably the moment where everything Kerensky fought for, trying to end the war, is just a precursor to realizing that was kind of technically more like the first one. It was a civil war because no one else got involved. The next ones are succession wars because everyone gets involved. <sighs> I'm just going to stop right now because I know that I just want a time, just a little time to catch my breath and process the end of that because there was a lot that happened there. It wasn't a lot of storyline, but there was a lot of realization coming to terms with the fact that, yes, Tex is pointing out things are bad emotionally, supply-wise, that the army itself, all of the remains of Star League are really damn good at what they do, but unfortunately, if they do anything right now, they'd have to turn their guns on the people they thought they were going to be protecting again. And they sound pretty broken. I don't think they could fight. They couldn't win against everyone. There's just too much, and they're too broken, too bad, or they have no support. It, Yeah, I, I think he's just going to say, fuck it. That's probably how all of the clans start. Kerensky goes, fuck it, looking at what's about to happen. Because even if you didn't know what's about to happen, just hearing that bit in piece about how they've been encroaching on the hegemony, you know what's going to happen. Even without foreknowledge, even without knowing all of Battletech and all of the mainline stories and all of the things that come later. I didn't expect it to hurt so much to get to this point, to get to revenge, to get to the point where Amaris is dead. And to feel like it was empty. God damn it, Tex. So again... If you guys haven't already, link below to the original video. Hit it up. Tex did a really damn good job just making you feel the high of victory, followed by the crushing weight of knowing it's not going to matter. God damn. So yeah, hit it up. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's anything obvious I missed, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next one, which I'm sure won't be soul-crushing in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me believe that for at least another week. Thanks. See you guys then. Adios.